Noel, the king is here. We come to celebrate the king tonight as we celebrate his birth. He is our king, our savior, and our Lord. You know, in Sunday mornings, we've been going through a series entitled Fear Not, Trusting God When Life Changes. And tonight, I want to come back to that same theme again tonight. We've looked at several different people who had to trust God because their life completely changed because an angel visited them. So we started the series and we looked at Zechariah and God answered his prayer for a son. We looked at Mary and God said, hey, I'm in control of everything. This morning, we looked at Joseph and we saw that God has the master plan. But each one of these, when the angel visited them, their life was completely changed. And yet the first thing the angel says to them is what? Fear not. Well, it's obvious that it would be something to fear if you see an angel. But these angels, each one came with a message. A message that would change each one of their lives, but a message of good news. And tonight, for just a couple of minutes, we look at the message that the shepherds heard. When the angels came to the shepherds, Lee read the passage just a few moments ago in Luke chapter 2, and we see that that the angels come and, of course, surprise the shepherds and they're in their fields at night and they're, they're just tending to their sheep, they're doing their own thing, and all of a sudden this bright light and, a, and, a sh and the angels come and change their life forevermore. Now, if you remember a little bit about shepherds, they were, they were kind of outcast, really. They were lower class people. In that day and time, they were usually poor, very humble uh, smelly because they hang around with sheep all the time. And they many times weren't even very educated or anything. They, they just very poor, simple, humble people that worked in the fields. And yet, God chose to let them have the message first. Isn't that great? They got the first news. They were the, the ones to receive the, the blessing of the, of the first news. And in the stillness and the quietness of that night, who knows exactly what time it was, but everything's going quietly and smoothly. And then suddenly this great light and the, 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 the angel comes. And, and you can imagine their first response is, my goodness, what did we do wrong? You know, Why is there an angel visiting us? Nobody visits us. What could he have to say to us? What have we done to displease God? Can you imagine them thinking things like that? But the angel immediately puts their fears aside and says, Do not be afraid. Fear not. Listen to the words. For behold, I bring you good tidings of a great joy, which shall be for all the people. Now, all these others we've looked at, Zechariah, Joseph, and Mary, they were, it was good news, but it was still it was a major change in their life. The angels come to the shepherds and they say, man, we give you good news, great news that will be for everyone. Now, you and I, we love great news, don't we? I mean, not long ago, Claudia and I had great news of being coming grandparents, you know, and, and that's just like a special blessing in, in, in a new way. And that's a wonderful thing. And, and all of us, when we get good news, we're excited, we love it, we're happy about it. Can you imagine the angels giving the greatest news ever given? The Savior is born in Bethlehem. It is interesting about this good news because the good news is the gospel. The good news is salvation comes through Emmanuel. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. So the good news, first of all, it, it's personal. Because the, the angel said it this way, For unto you, it's a personal news. The, the, the angel said, it's for you, shepherds, and for the whole world. It's personal. It's just like John 3.16 says to us, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. I like it in Romans 10, 13, it says it this way, For whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I'm so glad that each and every one of us in this room tonight is part of that whosoever. Whosoever will call upon the Lord. So it's good news because it's personal, for unto you. But then it's good news because it's present. For unto you is born this day 
It's present. It's not in the future. It's today. No more waiting. No more delays. Christ is born today. It's present. But it's also good news because it's practical. For unto you is born this day a Savior. A Savior. That's what we need. We, we think we need all the toys and presents under the Christmas tree that we're going to open a little bit later on. But no, the reality is what we really need is a Savior. The Savior, Jesus Christ. And then it's good news that fulfills prophecy. Because it says, for a Savior which is Christ the Lord. The Savior who is the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah, the anointed one, the one that they built up from the Old Testament all the way till now. He is finally here. He is finally born. And He is for all people. Not a select group, but for everyone. The announcement comes to the shepherds. And he says, good news. Glad tidings. This is a great news for all the world. When the angel finished giving the news, then he surrounded other angels and they begin to, to praise God loudly. And have you ever thought about why did they praise God? Well, they praise God, first of all, because Jesus' birth brought glory to God. This baby that we celebrate in the manger brings God great glory. It's his son who has come to live and die and, and rise again for us. But also the angel pray, prays because Jesus' birth, it says in the passage, brings peace to all mankind. You know, I came across an article this week, and it was talking about the Nobel Peace Prize. Anybody know? It's named after Alfred Nobel. And here's what's interesting. Alfred Nobel invented like over 300 different things. He was very intelligent, always inventing things, but he was known mostly for inventing dynamite. And then here's what happened one day. His brother died, and in the newspaper they put the obituary, but they put the wrong obituary. They put it as though Alfred had died, and at the end of his obituary they said, finally, the merchant of death is gone. And from that day forward... Alfred Nobel decided to try to bring peace into the world. And that's how the Nobel Peace Prize began. But we know that true peace only comes through Jesus Christ. Because He is the true person of peace. And then here's what's interesting about the shepherds. They get this news and, and they're excited and they're like, what do we do? And then, and then you see all of a sudden that their lives are changed forever. And, and look at verse 15. It says, when the angels had uh, returned to heaven, the, the shepherds said, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that's happened that the Lord has told us about. And they hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph. And there was the baby Jesus lying in a manger. Key words. They had, let's go. And then it says, they hurried. They had an immediate response. They were, they were afraid of the angels, but the angels gave them great news. And then all of a sudden they're thinking, okay, what do we do with this great news? Let's go see. Let's go see if it's for real. Let's, let's check it out. And they do it right away. And, and this whole idea of, of responding immediately, it's, it's now while we have the opportunity. Because you may not get another chance. Isaiah 55, 6 says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon Him while He is near. 2 Corinthians 6.2 says, Today is the day of salvation. It's, it's now while it's fresh on our hearts. When you get good news, you get excited about it, and it's fresh on your hearts, and you want to go see if it's true and tell others right away. There's no time like the present to let this baby in the manger be truly your Savior and your Lord. And then it's the time is now. While we could be doing other things, while we could be focusing on Christmas tree and Christmas lights and Christmas presents, let's focus truly on Jesus. It's an immediate response that they have, but here's the neatest thing too. The shepherds had a believing response. It says in the verse, let's see this thing that has happened. 
Let's go check it out. Let's see if this is for real. John 20 verse 31 says, But these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through His name. It's all about believing. It, it does no good if you just go see it and go see the baby or, or, or see the Jesus through the Bible and do nothing with it. You have to believe. And then once they see baby Jesus and they believe who he is, then notice as they get ready to return, notice what he says in verse 17. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. Can you imagine whoever's there at the manger that night? You know, Mary, Joseph, maybe some other people have come around just to see a brand new baby. And they begin to tell others at this point of the great news the angel gave to them. And then verse 20, the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard. And it was just as the angel had told them. Here's what I want you to see is, they see the baby, they, they believe he is the Messiah, and then they can't keep it to themselves. They want to tell everybody. They want to share with everyone, the light of the world has been born. And actually, that's what we are, right? We are His light. We're the light of the world. We're to tell everyone that the baby Jesus, born at Christmas, is the Savior of this world. That's our message. That we don't have to be afraid, just like the, everybody else, the angels say to them, do not fear. Why? Because good news, the good news of Christmas is that Jesus, our Savior and Lord, has been born. Amen. And it is us to believe receive, and then go tell. Will you pray with me? Lord, I am so thankful for your word tonight, for this time of celebrating who you are, the light of the world, the Savior of the world, the King of the world. And as we think of you being born in a manger, we're reminded in a few months we'll celebrate you again at Easter to celebrate your death and resurrection for us. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for being willing to leave heaven and come to earth, live that perfect life, and be our Savior and our Lord. Thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask my family to join me on stage at this moment. This is one of the times that we really enjoy in the candlelight Christmas Eve service. In just a moment, we're going to begin to sing Silent Night. And our family's going to light the candles. Come on over the side. Yeah. As you re your candle is lit, then I'm going to encourage you to lean over to the person next to you and light their candle as well. And then continue to sing this beautiful song, Silent Night.
Just as we see the beautiful light of each and every one of the candles, we are reminded that uh, we are to be the light of the world for Jesus Christ, to remind us that each one of our lives represents him as we are called his followers and we are called his disciples. And he is the great light of the world. He is the Savior and Lord of our lives. And yet he left us the job to light, continue the light. And so we, we light the world for him. Not just tonight on Christmas Eve, but every day of our life, we're called to light the world for him. And I encourage you to do that tonight as we leave here in just a few moments. And then as we continue through tomorrow, as you open presents, continue to light the way for him. And then as the new year comes, what a brand new opportunity to continue to be that light for the, for the Lord. I want to say to each and every one of you, from Claudia and Andrea and myself, as your pastor and family, we wish every and each one of you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year. And may the Lord bless you tonight, tomorrow, and throughout the new year. It's a beautiful time for us to not just sing about Silent Night, but sing about how joyful we are that He is the Savior of the world. And so, will you stand with us as we finish the service tonight, singing to him, Joy to the World. Christmas from the Grizzles out in Vail, all you Northwest Siders. It has been a, a great year. Amen? Yeah. Merry Christmas. You are dismissed. Snuff them out. Snuff them out. <laughs>